Hello and welcome to the video. This is another video in this short series, Building a Quad, putting together all of these separate components into something that will hopefully work. Now, the way I normally do these instructional videos or these how-to videos is by picking pieces that I know will work incredibly well. So, for example, things like the SpeedyB Master 5 V2 frame with the SpeedyB flight controller and ESC stack that I did about this time last year worked incredibly well. And it was a perfect candidate to do a how-to series aimed at beginners because I know everything's going to go together and work absolutely beautifully. However, this one is a little bit more of an adventure, and I thought it would be fun not to make more of a how-to, more of a can-it, using the Armatan frame that I got in for review, using the TBS Lucid Pro Flight Controller with the TBS Lucid 4-in-1 6SK Bully SC stack, and other things too, and seeing whether or not I could build out a 7-inch quad. Now, there are going to be potential hiccups along the way, but I thought it would be interesting, particularly for those of you that are relatively new to quad building, to see all of the problem solving that has to go into this. Because there usually is a lot of problem solving and scratching of heads if you are working with stuff that you haven't played with before. You have to work out the wiring and potentially bump into issues that you haven't had because you haven't had that particular frame flight controller, ESC configuration, whatever it is. So I'm going to go through this as it kind of happens and expose all of my thought processes, the good, the bad, and the ugly. We're probably not going to get through it all in this one video. Probably going to need at least one more to complete it all because rather than me just show you, oh, we just do this, this, and this, and we get to this result, this one's more of, I think I'm going to try this, we'll do this, and hopefully it'll work. Oh, it did, or oh, it didn't. So it's a bit more time spent in each piece. I'll put time codes down below, so if you want to zoom to a particular bit, you absolutely can. So enough of me blathering on, let's get into the actual pieces and talk about how I'm going to take all of these separate bits and turn it into a 7-inch iNav quad that will be great for endurance. So the first thing to figure out is can I get a GPS onto this frame? Um, the GPS mount isn't available at the moment. Hopefully Armatan will bring one out. And obviously I need to preserve as much physical room inside the body as I possibly can, because in a moment we'll look and see how everything's going to fit. Now, because there wasn't a GPS mount available at the time of recording, I did what I normally do, jumped on SketchUp and just made one. There's a little piece that goes in between the two metal brackets at the back that has two pieces that I can connect both a GPS antenna piece into. And then also there's a piece at the top that I can use to do something like a custom antenna mount setup as well. So hopefully that'll work for both. Hopefully Armatan will bring out their own proper versions of this. And again, I'm just trying to preserve as much physical room inside this frame as possible because things are already looking a little tight. And that brings me on to the next thing. Can I get the flight controller, ESC and Walksnail unit to fit inside this frame? The frame itself is quite tall, about 25 millimeters or just under, but there isn't a massive amount of room between the flight controller, ESC stack place and where the Walksnail unit would fit in the back, even though they've put in some mounting options for things like the HD Zero, Walksnail and DJI stuff. So first of all, let's put in the flight controller and the ESC stack, and then that gives us an idea of how much room we've got left. Having to use the Gorilla adapters on the Lucid flight controller stack here. Uh, there are 20 by 20 versions that I had in the first video. I've actually swapped those over to 30 by 30. It's a little bit less hardware to go inside. It will physically fit vertically, and it looks like there's gonna be enough room for the camera cables to go over the top. However, when I was trying to screw everything down, I found that some of the captive nuts for the plates at the bottom of the Armatan frame were actually hitting the bottom of the Gorilla adapters. So that meant that I needed to go and 3D print some plastic spacers to make everything fit. Now everything will still fit inside the frame, but this is a classic example of the kind of thing that you end up having to do just to tweak stuff and get things to work. Now the ESC and flight controller are in place, I can see that the space for the Walksnail unit on the mounts provided is incredibly tight. There's almost no room to kind of route the power cable around. 
So there is a chance to mount the Walksnail unit on the top plate. Now, they haven't put 20 by 20 mounting holes in the top plate, but I could drill those in. That isn't a showstopper. But if I did that, then, then there'd be room for the power cable to go below it, along with the room for the GPS cable, and probably the room for the receiver to go in there as well. And I could probably just about fit everything in there. I'll sort out the antennas at the end of the build when I know how much room I've got to play with, but I do have to keep in mind that I do need to leave a little bit of room to route the antennas around the Walksnail unit if it is connected to the top deck. Now I know that everything can fit in, it's time to flash the flight controller. I would always recommend flash your flight controller before you start soldering anything on. Lots of manufacturers won't accept flight controllers if they are covered in solder. So I make sure that everything was disconnected from the flight controller, took it off the stack, and then flashed it with iNav 7.1.2, which is the version that was available when I did this thing. And hopefully I'll be able to upgrade to iNav 8.0 when it's out. I'd like to fly and test it on that. Once that's done, standard stuff, calibrate the accelerometer and the level, and then also set up the ports for things like S-Bus, the GPS, and the Avatar um, Walksnail unit as well. All that stuff is in the manual. It's pretty straightforward. Nothing really different in terms of this step from the build I did last year. Now that the flight controller is configured with iNav, we know it's flashed, we know it's working, then I can start to connect things and do all the cabling. And then if something stops working, it's a pretty good chance that it's something that I've done. So the first thing we'll do is we'll actually connect the power up and put the capacitor on. And again, I don't really want to take up loads of room in the rear part of the frame because I've already identified that it's a bit tight back there. We really need kind of another 10 millimeters of deck behind the flight controller for everything to fit a little bit more neatly. And who knows, maybe Armatan will bring out a stretched version of this frame that will be able to do that. So there are pads on the top and bottom of the ESC for the power and the cap to solder onto. And I realized that the cap that came with the Lucid 6S4 in one actually fits into this gap in the frame. So if I have it resting in that gap, that will actually move it out of the way of a lot of the components. And that means that I've got far more room to fit everything in behind that ESC flight controller combo. So I'm going to do that. I may secure it with a cable tie later, but for now I've just covered the wires into the capacitor with heat shrink so that nothing shorts onto the carbon fiber of the frame, bent it into position, and then soldered the cap into place, and then tinned the pads for the motors as well while I've got the soldering iron all warmed up, and I've got the solder out too. Now, one of the things I noticed when I was going to solder the power wires onto the 4-in-1 ESC is that with all the Gorilla stuff bolted on, the adapter plates, this metal stuff, it gets a little bit tight. So I actually took all the brackets off in order to do the soldering. Just be careful. I found that there isn't a lot of room and it could be very easy if you're a bit carried away with the amount of solder that you use to when you put the frame pieces back on, potentially have them shorting to that metal. So triple check that you haven't got any shorts between those soldered connections and the Gorilla adapters. But with the power cable and the cap installed, I'm very pleased to see that I've not lost too much room. I can get everything running pretty flat along the back deck and up out of the back into the battery connection. So that's a pretty good result, I think, particularly being able to get that capacitor out the way. Next thing I thought I'd do is then to put a lost model alarm on this. Um, I like the idea of those. I'm not sure how it's configured with this Lucid Pro. Hopefully we can figure that out. But I have one of these Vifly, lost model Vifly finder things. And I think there's a great space in between the two pillars at the front of the frame. And it'll sit behind the camera, in between the camera and the flight controller ESC stack. Now I was going to 3D print some kind of mount that would go down over the top of these two posts and hold it in place. But actually, I just used a little bit of double-sided foam tape on the bottom and a cable tie and the Vifly lost model alarm. It sits there absolutely beautifully. It should be far enough away from the compass to avoid interference. Things like piezoelectric buzzers are notorious for making lots of electromagnetic interference. So you don't really want them anywhere near your compass or your GPS. Well, this is a pretty good place and I can get to it to press the button as well. Now I've got that set up, then it's time to wire up the GPS, the receiver 
and that buzzer. So I wired up the GPS and the compass and connected it to the flight controller to see what it looks like. Following this wiring diagram that I just sat down and drew out, I like to do wiring diagrams before I reach for the soldering iron and use the right colored cables in the diagram. It just means there's far less chance of me accidentally wiring something up the wrong way. M mixing up your transmit and receive pairs isn't a disaster, but mixing up the five volts and ground is definitely going to spoil your day. However, when I connected it back into the computer, fired everything up, there's no GPS signal. Looks like the GPS power doesn't come from the USB sadly. It looks like the receiver port is powered, but that's the only one. That's really disappointing. I love flight controllers that supply the five volts to things like the GPS and the other pieces from the USB port. It makes setup so much easier. To test that I've got the GPS connected properly, I'm gonna have to connect loads of other things, including the power system, so that the battery can power the flight controller, which will then provide the five volts to the GPS so we can test it. The thing as well is that the barrel also appears red when I'm connecting to the lost model alarm. I'm not sure what's actually causing that. It doesn't seem to be all the time. I did kind of have a play with this. I was worried that I soldered something wrong with the lost model alarm. Obviously isn't sounding because it isn't getting surprise prize the five volts from the USB. Maybe that's part of it. So now I need to connect up the motors as I don't want to power the ESCs without motors attached because ESCs don't tend to like that. So the next thing then is gonna be motor attachment. Now these motors come with all of the screws and pieces you need, but I did remove the arms to make the motor attachment a lot easier. And that meant that I was using the just the shorter screws into the bottom of the motors they're just long enough i'd recommend using some kind of thread locker into your screws it tend to find as you get bigger and bigger motors with bigger and bigger props you can run into vibration issues where if your screws aren't tight they will unwind so whenever you're going into metal i would recommend just use a little bit of thread lock it'll stop things coming undone rooted the wires down the length of the arm and used a little bit of heat shrink over the top just to keep them in place and also protect them in case something bad happens. Soldered each of them onto the ESC, leaving a little bit of slack in case I need to swap things around. So I have done this little bit of kink. Hopefully it looks quite neat. It also potentially allows me in future if I want to change the flight control stack, I have that option. Now we've got that done, if I'm going to power it, I might as well power it and do all the standard stuff and check the receiver and check the modes and all the other bits and pieces with iNav2. So I'm gonna be adding an Express LRS receiver into this. I thought the best one would be something like a diversity. So I've got this Beta FPV Super D diversity receiver. And again, I'll figure out where the antennas are going to go afterwards. So I attach the antenna onto the receiver, soldered the wires, and covered it in the heat shrink that came in the packet. And then I did power it from the bench power supply set to five volts, updated it to the latest version of Express LRS, version 3.5.3 as I'm recording this, I actually still had version 3.0.0 on it, and I might play with Mavlink and things with it with the future, and then soldered it on as normal onto those connections at the top. Now this receiver is one of the few things that is actually powered from the USB, so if you wanted to, you could just check your receiver bits and pieces at this point. Connected it to the bottom deck using good old double-sided foam tape and confirmed that everything was moving in iNav Configurator. So with the receiver on it and the receiver all working, I guess we're at the point where we need to plug it in. And hopefully by powering it with the battery, we should see the barometer just appear and appear reliably as well as things like the buzzer and stuff bursting into life as well. I have checked with an ohmmeter that there isn't a dead shot on here. I've kind of tried to check that everything is connected where it should be in terms of positive and negative wires. So there's no point in delaying it really. Um, this is genuinely the first time I'm going to be plugging it in. So always kind of hold your breath for this little bit. So here goes. Three, two, one. Okay. I expect the ESCs are freaking out because they're not getting a signal because I don't think the outputs are enabled, but let's just plug it into the computer and just check 
and see if we have a barometer and a GPS. The, the GPS is powered, we have LED lights. So let's click on connect. Barrels initialized, GPS as has well. That looks an awful lot better. Let's turn the outputs on. Save and reboot. Hopefully when it comes back, the ESCs will be a little bit happier. Outstanding. Okay, that looks Phew, like it's in really good shape. Uh, the video's been going on for long enough here. I think what we'll do is we will stop it here. I will take a break, and then when we come back, we will finish the setup. We'll do things like set up the uh, bits and pieces for the GPS compass unit, because it's a slight angle, which is by design. Also then put in the walk snow unit and make sure that's all configured, and sort out where all of the antenna bits and pieces go. But it looks like we are in really good shape. It looks like that weird thing with the barrow was due to the fact that it's something to do with the power and maybe running everything off USB. So join me next time and we'll finish this off and then we'll take it out, give it a fly and see how these motors actually work in practice. I'm interested to see how they perform and potentially replace them with other motors, if you have some fantastic suggestions of a model of this kind of weight and size for seven inch props, maybe having something that has a little bit less power and a little bit more efficiency. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Payland 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.